I kind of just was like, I had this idea anyway to help women reorganize their closets and like make it to where it's easier to get dressed in the morning mm -hmm. um, because that's a challenge we all face. Oh my gosh, yes, um, 100%. And I was like, I can make a business out of this. And so I kind of just went for it. So Sarah, thank you for coming out today oh gosh, on, on a rainy day having me. <laughs> <laughs> and leaving your baby so you get a little alone time. Yes. So hopefully this is good. Oh, it's, I mean, <laughs> an hour away for myself. It's treasure time. <laughs> right. And I figure it's early in the morning. So we needed to do our makeup anyway, because we were just discussing how us Southern ladies, we don't go anywhere without our face on, right? No. no, no. All right. So we're going to create some joyful faces today. All right. So before we get started, I want to jump right in because you are a stylist. Yes. What would you say is one celebrity or fashion icon or someone that you really love to follow that you would mm -hmm. love to walk in their closet and just take from it? Just raid their closet. Okay, easiest question. Okay. Hailey Bieber. Really? Oh, Justin Bieber's wife? Yes. Okay. I, I love die that. for her style. Like, it's so elegant and cool but effortless like she just marries everything together and mm -hmm. like have you ever seen her look bad never no i haven't <laughs> okay i just love that you immediately knew yeah. it off the top okay <laughs> and i would say that i feel i feel a little Haley bieber on you <gasps> thank you oh my god because you're all tall long and lean just like her i mean she's <laughs> my girl crush for sure <laughs> okay wonderful all right Haley bieber okay so we're gonna jump right into things. We're gonna go ahead and start our makeup. So I told you to bring seven or less makeup products. Now, yes. was that hard for you? Yes, it was. It, it was, was a really challenge. hard for me. I was thinking, oh, this would be easy. And then this morning I was like, <laughs> I didn't pack a concealer. I have to pack a concealer. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and dump all your products okay. out. So I gave you um, a little towel right there. I'm gonna put mine out there. And I just want you to start doing your makeup as you would if you were at home. I don't, okay. you know, we just, we're gonna chat more and do our makeup as we talk. Perfect. Um, I do have the only cheap products that I have here, some eye makeup remover, some Q-tips, if you need a Kleenex. Okay. And then I do have some makeup brushes. Did you bring I makeup brought a brush? couple of makeup brushes. You brought your makeup brushes. I okay. did. All right, so we will just kind of get started. Um, the reason I wanted to do this sort of, I guess, I hate to call it an interview, but this sort of series mm -hmm. is because I've always enjoyed as a female growing up with my girlfriends. This mm -hmm. is kind of how we connect is like sitting on the couch, putting on our makeup okay. together, like in college, sitting, you know, like on my bunk bed in my dorm mm -hmm. room. Like that was the fun part. I know when I met my husband's um, sister, mm -hmm. like the way we connected was, I remember I went to his house one day. We both had our makeup bags. We sat on the couch. And we started doing our makeup and she was like, oh my gosh, you like makeup? I was like, yes, I do. She's like, I do too. I and so it was just that. kind of fun, you know, just something you do like with girlfriends. Yeah. And that's when you ha have like the most like best chats and figure out things about people. So that's why I wanted to start um, like this. And I always learn stuff from other people. Like even mm -hmm. though, you know, I feel like I'm an expert. Yeah, in you're the pro. <laughs> I can still learn from everybody else like learn about new mm -hmm. products um find maybe new ways that other people are doing things mm -hmm. i feel like and i'm sure you feel the same way being a stylist like you're always learning something new about your craft when you are with somebody For else sure. and that's yeah. like the most fun so let's go ahead and get started so you just do you whatever okay. you would start with so are you starting with face i'm starting with face yeah so start with eyebrows because ooh, even though you can't see mine right now because my eyebrows are um covered up by my bangs i always start with eyebrows but your eyebrows are good if you got some naturally good brows. I've heard there. that my brows are like my most defining feature. And Everyone that is amazing. Everyone always recognizes me by my brows. That's great. Well, they have like this really good natural arch. Now, are you blessed with those? Do you get them threaded? What do you um, do? So I get them waxed, okay. um, but I don't like wax a lot. I ask them to like keep my natural brow shape and just clean them up. Okay. So nothing crazy. Like it really is kind of my natural brow shape. I just take care of what needs to be take care, taken yeah. care of. Okay. So you're just like blessed with those things and then you just get them shaped up. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right into your business because now would you consider yourself a stylist, a wardrobe stylist? Like what do you, what do you call yourself when you introduce yourself to people? Like what's your business? Yeah. So I usually introduce myself as a personal stylist. Um, and then I also would consider myself a professional organizer, which who knew that that was a career I didn't until Ooh. a few years ago. Okay. Um, yeah. but we've all seen the home edit, right? Yes. Best show. Love on Netflix. it. It is. Love uh, it. It's so good. Season two is coming. Okay. Um, all right. 
So I saw that show and I was like, you know what? I can do this. So I kind of just was like, I had this idea anyway to help women reorganize their closets and like make it to where it's easier to get dressed in the morning mm -hmm. um, because that's a challenge we all face. Oh my gosh, yes, um, 100%. And I was like, I can make a business out of this. And so I kind of just went for it. All right, so <laughs> let's, let's kind of get into that. First of all, your business is called Styled by the Wave, correct? Yes. All right, so how did you come up with the name? Did anybody inspire you to do this? Or was it the home edit that inspired you to start this? Like what, what was mm -hmm. your inspiration behind it and how'd you get your name? Those are my first two questions. So the idea actually came, like when I say that I knew that I wanted to work in fashion, but I just didn't know what to do and I mm -hmm. started praying about it. I mean, literally I was like, God, please give me like some guidance. I, I know I want to do something, but like mm -hmm. I have no idea what. Right. And so this idea just came to me to combine personal styling with organizing. And I, it was like right before the pandemic okay. that I started. And so not the greatest time to have an idea, but whatever. <laughs> we went for it anyway. Um, and that's how it kind of came to be. Okay. And the name. So my last name is Sailors. Right. Um, and... If anyone knows me, they know that my dream is to have a yacht. Oh, okay. So I haven't heard you talk about that. Okay. Yes. Elaborate. So it's kind of like the running joke of the family. Like, whose dream is to have a yacht? I don't know. It's mine. <laughs> it's so, pretty fabulous, though. Um, I just, I feel like I would thrive. Um, so, so do you want to live on the yacht or you just want to have the yacht? I just want to have the yacht. Okay, like, I right. still need land. Okay, gotcha. All but right. I, I think that having a yacht for, like, all my friends... Mm -hmm. Like to go have summer fun on would be amazing. Okay. So, but I love the water. That's my comfortable place. That's the whole point is my comfy place. My happy place is on the water. Mm -hmm. And so I like kind of coupled the water, my last name, and then started thinking about um, my struggles with uh, body image. So I was a competitive gymnast my whole life. Right. Yep. Um, Go dogs. Go dogs. All right. That's UGA right. gymnast here. <laughs> yes. National championships, correct? <laughs> well, our team not, unfortunately, but okay. the storied history right. 10 national championships. Right. Okay. Incredible. Still, you were an, you are a competitive gymnast yeah. <laughs> for college. That's kind of the big deal. Um, so I just had this whole history of like disordered eating and body dysmorphia and just like all these things that I hope no one else has to deal with, but mm -hmm. it's just a fact of life. People deal with that. Um, especially females. Especially females. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking about a wave in the sense of like everyone has different body types. We all look different. Like there's no two people that are exactly the same. There's no two waves that are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And so I just had this idea to kind of couple like my affinity for the ocean and the water mm -hmm. with my passion for empowering women. Gosh, I love and it. And then the wave was born. So by the wave, oh yes. My gosh. Okay, I love that. So when when you were at Georgia in college, I was a fashion merchandising major. Oh no way! Is that what you were? I wanted to do that because when you say you're a fashion, so what was your major? So I started out as fashion merchandising major, but okay. it didn't work with gymnastics schedule. Oh, so interesting. I had to change my major. So I ended up doing consumer journalism. Um, but I was able to take a bunch of fashion classes within that major. Okay. So I got a little bit of both worlds. Um, was right. able to like keep my gymnastic schedule and then also learn about fashion in okay. some elective classes. Okay. So tell, elaborate on that a little bit because a little bit because I obvi obviously was never a competitive gymnast. I didn't do any sort of sports <laughs> in college. But there are a lot of people that want to be college athletes. Mm -hmm. And what is it about? you couldn't do fashion merchandising because of gymnastics. Was it like, what was yeah. it about it? Was it scheduling? So like, it was scheduling. So, um, practice was set at a certain time and you had to schedule all of your classes around, um, those practice times. And so for my specific major, a lot of the major required classes were right smack dab in the middle of practice. So that was the fashion merchandising yep. when you started. Exactly. Okay. So that just, it just wasn't really that. an option. Um, and sometimes the team does work with um, students who are maybe like pre-med because like 
<laughs> you know. You gotta take those classes gotta, to be a doctor. We you gotta, gotta support the doctor. <laughs> yeah, you um, can't, really, can't really go a different route. Yeah, but for me, it just wasn't really, um, like, I wanted to practice with the team and figure that out. So I just changed my major, and it was fine. It's worked out. <laughs> yeah, oh, it has worked out. Well, I feel like, you know, when it, if you have an affinity and a knack, especially for, like, styling with what you do, it just kind of mm -hmm. comes naturally. Now, the business part is the hard part. Do you agree? Oh, my like, gosh. Like, the business side of starting your own, like, small business. Honestly, thank goodness I didn't know what I didn't know when I started. Uh -huh. Because who knows if I would have started. Yeah, the business side is definitely the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but it has been really fun to learn uh, like something new, like all like how to run a business has been interesting to me. So mm -hmm. at least I have that going for me. But I just did my taxes, and that was not <laughs> that was not fun. Oh, that is the least fun part of owning a business. Now, you said you started by the wave right before the pandemic. So how old is your daughter now? She is 19 months. She is a true so you <laughs> have her, baby. You so you, you decided to start a business, and then you got pregnant. So they I'm happened the almost simultaneously. So, so I like, I'm started. Start a business and have a baby. I started my business in September of 2019. Okay. We found out that I was pregnant the first week of November 2019. So it was about one month separation. Wow. Yeah. And then of course pandemic hit three months later. Four so, months later. Yeah. All sorts of things. I mean, think about. By the wave, that kind of goes with all of the probably waves that have been crashing on you trying oh, to develop. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> that is so great. All right, so with your business, tell me, like, what what's your favorite part about styling people or organizing people um, in their closet? Like, what's your favorite part about what you do? If you had to pick one thing specifically. Yeah, so... For sure, the favorite part is when I teach someone a new styling trick or I create an outfit that they haven't thought of before. Mm -hmm. And like the sheer joy and shock on their face when they're like, I can wear that is so priceless. Like it's my favorite thing. Uh huh. It makes me so happy. So, do you work with all age ranges? Like, do you work with, I mean, from how old are you? I'm 29. All right, so yep. uh, 29. Do you work with 20 to 30 year olds, 20 to 40? Have you worked with all yeah. age ranges? So I've actually worked with a huge age range. So um, my youngest client um, was in her late teens. Okay. And my oldest client has been in her mid 70s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, but I would say that like the sweet spot really is in like the 25 to 45 range. Like okay. that is the majority of my clientele. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to um, like growing up as a gymnast and being in com competitive sports, what kind of role do you feel like beauty or styling played like with the sport that you did? Because I feel like with gymnasts, because I've done makeup for the UGA gymnastics mm -hmm. team recently. Yes. And I know that those girls, I've also done makeup work for the basketball team and other various athletics. I've worked with track members before. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a difference with the gymnasts. Like, they are a bit more open to just full-out glam. Just now, there are a handful of the other girls that were wanting to go for it. But they're all more, like, natural-looking. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the gymnasts, they were not scared. Most of them, for the most part, were not scared of makeup. Like, is that part yeah. of the whole... I think it for sure is part of the sport, really, especially in college gymnastics because, um, so college gymnastics is unique in that, um, so gymnastics as a sport is an individual sport. So your whole life, you're very used to competing for individual accolades. Mm -hmm. Um, for me personally, my ultimate goal was the Olympics. So it was always like me, me, me. And then you transition to the college world and it's entirely about the team. You're taught to never say I, it is always we, it is always team oriented. Oh. Because in competition, um, the accolades come from the team, the team score. Okay. So when you think about it, the facade that you put on as a team really um the judges are paying attention to that. And so it's mm -hmm. almost like when you're getting ready for the day, we would always take hours to do our meat, hair, and makeup. 
Oh, okay. And it's kind of like stage makeup because you're putting on a show for yes. the crowd, for the judges. So um, we went all out. There's lots of glitter involved. I mean, literally, like for sure, I've glue that. and glitter on the face. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's like costume stage makeup, and I think it's just a good way. Um, or at least for me personally, it was a great way on meet day to kind of calm my nerves, um, look good, feel good, compete good. So 100%. I would kind of like use that time to calm my nerves and like have fun before I had to go be super serious on the competition floor. Right. I mean, putting on my makeup is always kind of my Zen moment. Like it is. If I don't put on my makeup, I don't feel like I can tackle the rest of the day. Oh, like, me legit. neither. <laughs> like, I just got to sit here and paint my face and put a little joy back into this um, blank canvas. And I recently saw you at a gym dog meet. And so you yes. were actually, are you doing something for gymnastics? Like, were you were an announcer or what, yes. what was your role? So, um, I was at almost all the home meets this year. Um, one meet, I had the honor of calling the dogs on the floor. Um, which yep. is just the past alumni gets to go down on the floor and call the dogs. Which That's is, when I was there when you yes. were wearing the red jumpsuit, yep, right? That was okay. It. Um, so that was really fun, but I also do a little bit of work with SEC Network um, with commentating, oh, wow. and it is so fun. It is quite a challenge, so <laughs> everyone at home, when you're watching live sports on TV and it's the announcer said easy. something silly, live TV is hard. <laughs> oh, I bet. So how did you get into that? Like, how did that come Oh, about? it was like the most random thing ever. A girlfriend of mine, she did commentating, and um, one weekend a few years ago, she had a family emergency and had to find a replacement last minute, and she called me and was like, I need you to go on TV for me. <laughs> I was like... No, <laughs> I don't think so. Oh but gosh. I did it, and it was so fun, and um, I've been doing it here and there ever since. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so is it one of those things, the more you do it on live, is it live TV? It's live TV, or yeah, is it pre-recorded? For the most part, it's live, so the whole okay. competition you're commentating live um, some producers like to pre-record like the open or um, like a segment that they'll play in the middle of the competition, but all the ones I did this year were straight live. So wow. when the mic was on, you were on TV. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so are there some tips for being on television if anybody needed like tips for any sort of like live television is there any sort of styling tips you have oh, for what yes. you should wear what you shouldn't wear should you wear prints should you wear solids like what yeah. what would you say what's your so advice? i actually shared a little bit about this on my instagram um tips for dressing for television or just anytime you're going to be on camera okay so my recommendations are um to avoid any kind of like crazy busy print because it's just too much for the camera to pick up. Okay. Um, also focus on what your background is. So for me at the competitions, I know that my background um, is solid black. So I avoided wearing black because I wanted to be able to pop off oh. what the background was. Okay. You don't want to blend in with exactly. your background surroundings. Okay. And then also choose something that's going to be like no fuss on your body. So like avoid big bows or like crazy things that you're going to be tempted to like play with or touch. Like you want your outfit to be just stay in place and be able to sit there and look pretty the whole time. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I go for things that are a little bit more structured, a little bit more fitted. Um, just so I know, like I'm not going to be obsessing over what's on my body. Oh my gosh. It makes yeah. total sense. So it's 2022. What would you say are the biggest fashion trends currently? Either you either you like them or you dislike them. What are you seeing that we should all be paying attention to in terms of trends or do you do, or do you follow trends? Like what do you, what's your feeling on all that? Yeah, my feeling is I definitely follow trends, but um I mean, fashion is meant to be manipulated, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So you can follow the trends. You can look at what's on the runway. You can look at what um, your favorite celebrities are wearing. And you can take, like, little grains from that and then make them your own. So um, currently, I would say, as we're heading into spring, summer, right now, on trend is big, bold colors. So, like, oh, look you... At me. I'm not so on trend. 
you're on a trend right now. Um, okay, wow. Okay, good. Also, like, mixing different colors and color blocking and just kind of, like, having a lot of fun with it. Um, you may hear it referred to as dopamine dressing because it just is, like, oh, I mean, wow. to be honest, we're coming out of, like, some rough times. We're still in some rough times. So, if you can, like, boost your mood with how you're dressing, uh, I'm for all sure. for it. Go for it. Yeah, so... Lots of color is definitely on trend. Um, and then for spring, summer, we're gonna see a lot of mini skirts. Um, and anything that shows a lot of leg is kind of on trend. So mini skirts, fun shorts, um, that's something that we're seeing a lot of. And of course, not every trend works for everyone, but right. you can kind of find ways to incorporate it into your wardrobe if you're a little bit creative, which is where I come in. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, because I would say for, like, me, I need to do some, like, Carrie Underwood leg exercises. Good. <laughs> well, your legs are one of your best assets. I oh, will say, I think you. I commented on your Instagram before when you show off some of your, um, like, today, your cute little dress. Yes, your, yes thank you. I mean, some of your leg is covered up with your knee boots, but you have really great gymnast legs. Thank you. Um, what would you say for someone like me? I'm 44. Mm -hmm. um, say I want to wear a mini skirt or whatever. I do have, like... You know, varicose veins from childbirth and the legs. Don't love it. I, I will use some leg makeup every now and then. Um, but how could I rock a trend like that? Yeah, so um, just because we say mini skirt doesn't mean that it has to be a micro mini. So you can kind of shop for things that are more appropriate to your age and your comfort level, all of those things. Okay. So you can find mini skirts that have a little bit longer of a length. Um, another good trick that I like to use, and I'm actually implementing it today, um, my mini dress is just probably m maybe an inch too short, if we're being honest. <laughs> so if I, I'm pretty... I would say I'm maybe average height. I'm five six. How tall are you? I'm five four and a half. Okay, I think so I'm like more I'm a little I'm a little on the taller side. A little maybe. above average. A little above. Mm -hmm. So um, when I buy mini dresses, especially, I have to be really careful because they can run a little short on me. Mm -hmm. But I loved this dress and I wanted to get it. So the way I compensate it is I just put on a cardigan that's longer mm -hmm. to kind of bring the comfort level back. So I'm wearing something that's pretty short, but then I paired it with something that's much longer to cover up my legs a little bit to cover up my bottom so that I feel okay. more comfortable yeah, and yeah. Now it's very so cute it kind of creates balance okay so yeah. you kind of balanced balanced the length out of the short dress by wearing a longer cardigan exactly underneath. now what are some of your go-to places to shop so personally locally, and even for yeah let's do local Okay, locally, hands down, um, I'm sure the girls at Cheeky Peach are like, oh, she's back. Uh, they know <laughs> I'm, you're there. I'm there all the time. Um, well, Katie does have a very good sense of fashion. Oh, she's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, and bravo to them for everything they're buying. It's so good. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love to go in there and shop locally. Um, I also love the Indigo Child. Um, they have some really fun pieces. Um, okay. They're a little more like boho, hippie, lots of color, lots of rock and roll, but so fun. Mm -hmm. So um, I go in there quite a bit. Um, and then... Now, if you were to buy online, where would yeah, you go? Yeah, online. ASOS is probably my go-to. I think that's um, what the sweater is. I'm pretty oh, sure yes. that's what this is. I love it. Nice and affordable. Nice and affordable. So I love ASOS. Um, they kind of have a wide range of so much. Like you can get lower end, you can get higher end, you can um, you can get a prom dress on there and you can also get a basic white t-shirt. So it's just like they have a little bit of everything. So if right. I'm looking for something or maybe I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> I know ASOS is going to have it. Okay. So I love that. Um, I do Zara, like the, the affordability. Oh, yep. yes. Zara. Zara affordability is incredible, too. Um, and that is a great way to try out some trends without, like, going all in. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like Zara and ASOS are good for all age ranges? Um, I would say yes. Um like for your 70 year old client, if you had so, like a 60, 70 year old client, yeah. where would you send I'm them? I'm probably not going <laughs> to Zara Asus for okay. them. Um, I'm probably looking more at 
um, your classic department stores to like Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Nordstrom always a good too. Yeah, that's always like a good place to start, especially for the basics or like the wardrobe staples. Um, I also love Anthropology. I think that's a great store mm -hmm. um, for a wide variety. I think like your um, your sister and then your grandma can all go in there and find something mm -hmm. great. So um, that's a great place. Um, and then. Your, like, Banana Republics, your Loft, um, are another, like, great option for affordable but, like, classic silhouettes. Okay. Do you feel like your style has changed since you became a mom? Or do you feel like you're still very true to yourself even though you're a mom? Like, you're still going to rock yeah. just some of the same things. So, I would say that maybe I've become a little bit more conscious of, like, Okay, I have a kid now. <laughs> uh -huh. But um, for the most part, no. I think like something that's so empowering about being a woman is being able to like embrace your body through all phases of life and embrace like what you love and not like scaling back just for someone else's comfortability. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually something that I learned a lot through my breastfeeding journey is like don't worry about what other people are thinking. Like, if your baby's hungry, your baby's hungry. Mm -hmm. um, that right. may be a little controversial, but... But then you got to figure out the right shirt that's going to work yes. right. Yes, yes, exactly. That so a, That was always a, an issue with my three kids. That like, was a oh. huge challenge, um, was trying to find cute outfits that I really loved, but were, you know, mom-friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like functional. Yeah, that's kind of the thing that I have felt, um, even through makeup. Like, I probably sometimes wear more than the average bear but it makes me feel good so i'm like even though i'm a mom i'm still probably gonna go full out glam even if i'm going to target sometime if I, if that's the, how I the day that. is feeling like i'm just i'm gonna go for it now i i meant to start a timer that was gonna be part of this i was gonna start a timer that we were um that we were gonna do 15 minutes what are we at we're at 30 minutes already see this is what happens when i start uh -oh. talking with <laughs> with a girlfriend and makeup i start to get carried away all right so i am how are you with your face? Are you about at the point where I, you're like, you know what? I would feel comfortable being done. I feel comfortable being done. I love, wow, I, you really are fast. Yeah, I'm pretty fast. I also like, I don't think I wear a lot of makeup. I think I like to keep it kind you of like fresh. like to keep it kind of neutral? Now on TV, whoa, there's oh, a whole gonna, different routine that right. I do. <laughs> okay, so. But just for every day. Okay. I like fresh. That's, your makeup style is more like everyday fresh. Do you feel like you put more effort into hair or clothes? Uh, oh. Or makeup? Oh. Probably Wait, close. that's challenging. Yeah. Which, okay, I would say it probably goes clothes, then hair, hair. and then makeup. Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah, see, I actually will I will pick out an outfit that feels like me and then I'll figure out what kind of makeup I want to do with mm -hmm. that and then I'll accessorize and do hair. Hair is always last for me. Oh, I just don't like doing hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so tell me top three products you brought with you, like your okay. go-tos since we are at 30 minutes. Yes. What's your top three okay. that you just can't do without? Cannot do without. Okay, first of all, the Maybelline Magic Eraser Concealer. This has seen some days. <laughs> it might be time for a new one. It might be time for a new one. I'm like nearing. It's time to make a trip to Ulta. Yes. Um, but it is I so good love this little sponge applicator, uh -huh. and I feel like it works as good as like a NARS concealer. Um, for sure. Yeah. I'm actually not in love with the NARS concealer. You're I know not. that is probably very con controversial. No, I am not. I've bought okay. it a couple times and I'm like, not it's not worth you. it. Not for the price tag when you yeah. can get a Maybelline. See, yeah. And so I usually, I've only ever bought the NARS concealer like maybe twice. Uh -huh. um, I think I got it the first time for my wedding. Yep. Fun fact, I did my own makeup for my wedding. <laughs> Which, oh my yeah. gosh, if I can find a picture of, from you from your wedding, you were rather, rather stunning. Oh, thank oh you so gosh. much. Um, so I love that concealer. It works so good. Okay. okay. Number two. Oh, this is so difficult to pick out just three, but I'm going to go with my Milani lipsticks. Um, oh my gosh, I love those. Yeah. The <laughs> Milani lipsticks, I think are another like drugstore find uh -huh. that really wear very high end. Um, and which two I, colors do you have Okay, here? the two that I have right now are Teddy Bear okay. and Naturally Chic. These are like my two favorite everydays. And I then I like the red chic. too. I have Naturally Chic mm -hmm. over here. Look. I've got Naturally Chic 
And then I love matte tender. Oh, these are I just really good, well. like mauve, yeah. like everyday colors. Like these are kind of my bridal go tos for some brides. Yes, I love them. Because they're those. just matte enough that mm -hmm. they stay for a good long time. Yeah. Um, and they're not expensive, they don't break the bank. I'm sitting here trying to do an amazing red lip while talking, and it is not working out good. <laughs> well, I'll keep talking. Then. Okay, so I'll what's your back. third? Okay, number three, um, I would say is another drugstore find mm -hmm. um, that I think is the best dupe to like the Laura Mercier setting powder or the translucent powder and I get the infallible pro sweet yes see that is like my all-time forever it's so freaking good but well fun fact I haven't tried that one maybe okay, I need to try I it I like this one okay. it's the infallible pro sweep and lock um by L'Oreal Paris and mm -hmm. I get the translucent color um and I just apply it underneath my eyes to set my concealer and then a little bit all along my jawline to kind of sharpen my bronzer a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I like it. And that is okay. what I'm I do. Like, I might need to try that then. Okay, so now we've talked about our products. It's my red lip. Look, Georgia Bulldog enough. Oh my gosh. I love wow, it. It is so major. Um, all right, I noticed you're using the Dream BB Fresh. Yes. Which that is really... This is one of the things whenever I teach teenage girls, if there's anybody, a mm -hmm. teen that's watching that's like getting into makeup, that is actually one of my favorite formulas for like an entrance to makeup if people are scared of like mm -hmm. full on foundation like I have on the yeah. El Maquillage, which is like no joke coverage. Which I love. It looks so good on your skin. Yeah, thank you. But like if someone's just like entering makeup mm -hmm. and they don't want all this, I always say the the BB Fresh is good by Maybelline. It's been around yeah. for ever like I it's so light mm -hmm. and it looks like skin it looks like skin and like for a day to day I don't love to have a lot of foundation on my face mm -hmm. so this is what I go for um I actually think that my foundation that I do use okay you tell me professional opinion I use the Clinique it's a Clinique um formula I have it I have, I have it I know I like Clinique products I think that they're really good um a girlfriend Actually, I bought this also for my wedding. It's the Clinique Even Better Glow. So it's just like a little bit more. Yeah, just a little more coverage. coverage. Uh -huh. And I like it. But I like that my skin still feels like it can breathe. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. still a very, Clinique's all very, very good and very natural looking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to start to wrap up this YouTube video. I could literally talk to you forever <laughs> about, um, about makeup, about styling, about organization um but i want to kind of jump into this one thing that i used to do i used to have fun fact i used to have a podcast haven't kept it up um but i want to kind of implement it it's called it's kind of like a rapid fire question for my okay. guests and so i'm going to give you seven rapid fire questions and you have to immediately tell me which one i'm going to give you two options okay. and you you just tell me which one you're going to go for okay this is pressure all right let's go ahead and do it all right ready um first one neutrals or color color jeans or skirts skirts Heels or sneakers? Heels. Hair up or down? Down. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Books or movies? Books. Sunglasses or hats? That's the hardest one. Oh, I know, because I've seen all the hats in the okay, background. Of I have when you... to say hats. Really? Yeah. See, and I feel like hats are hard for everybody. I love a hat. You love a hat. I like love a all hat. types of hats? I would say I'm probably partial to like a nice wide flat brim fedora. Okay. But um, yes, I love a hat. Yeah, I do. I, and I love to see you in hats. And I always notice them in the back of your yeah. like Instagram stories when you do your photos. Yes. Okay. So let's finish up and tell everybody where they can find you after they've watched this. Like yes. where can they find Sarah Sailors? Okay. So the best place to connect with me is on Instagram at by underscore the wave. And then I also have an email list where I keep up with all of my gals. Um, so you can sign up for my newsletter and that's like the best way to get free fashion advice and mm -hmm. shopping tips I just impart what little wisdom I have in my email list and share that um, so that's another great place to join me okay um, and then I'm also on Facebook I'm not as active on there though are you active on Facebook not really. no no not as much as I used yeah. to be it's definitely more Instagram I love Pinterest do you have a Pinterest page okay I have to start a Pinterest you page. Have maybe to, you're you my people. motivation to you start people need a Pinterest page <laughs> okay. I am obsessed with Pinterest I love following people on Pinterest and that is actually one of the biggest places for me that I get like fashion mainly fashion and mm -hmm. recipe advice because I'm I feel like 
I like fashion, but it's not what I'm great at. Yeah. And cooking is definitely not anything that I'm good at. <laughs> so I am constantly pinning new recipes yeah. and like fashion ideas um, that I get from other people. Okay. So I'd love to be able to pin some of your outfits. So you need to okay. start a Pinterest page. See, I'm on Pinterest. I just haven't done it for business. So oh, got, 100% okay. you need to do it for right. business. <laughs> Join me on Pinterest soon. She just motivated me. We, yeah, we were going to go ahead. I'm going to bully you into starting a Pinterest page because you would be so good at it. And then you have a website. Is I it also just have by a website. Wave or styled it's by the wave. styledbythewave.com. So you can find me there. And you can also, if you want to work with me, if you're in need of a personal stylist or a personal organizer for your closet, you can fill out the form on the website and okay. I'll be in touch with you. And so you also offer, I saw that you offer virtual yes is it virtual wardrobe yes. styling is it organizing what's yeah. virtual that you so can do the virtual service that I have right now is um, it's called a virtual style guide so basically what happens is you fill out a questionnaire and just kind of tell me a little bit about yourself your sizing um, your likes and dislikes so I can get a good sense of your personal style mm -hmm. and then I shop for you and put it all in a beautiful magazine style PDF that you can click each item that I'll link everything for you and then create tons of outfit ideas. So usually okay. I include around 40 to 50 items mm -hmm. um, in the book and then I'll create upwards of like a hundred outfit ideas using all of those items. So you can always just go to the book and see, okay, what am I going to wear today? And it's all laid oh my gosh, out it's there It's kind of like you. a little cheat sheet. It's a cheat sheet. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. I love it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on, you. on my YouTube channel and hopefully we will have to have you back since you're the first yes. installment. We'll have to have you back and see how your business is going. Oh my gosh. I would love that. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Bye y'all. And what, one thing I will do at the end of this video is I will actually link some of the products that I used on my face today. I will link some of the ones that Sarah did down below in the description. And I'll also add links to her um, social media website and everything. So if you want to go check her out, you'll be able to easily do so in the description box of the YouTube um, video. All right. Thanks y'all so much for watching and we'll see you on the next episode of Joyful Faces. <laughs> <laughs>